In this video, we're going to be talking about authority, or a person's expertise on a particular topic. We will also touch upon different types of authority, depending on context or the information need. There are different types of authority. Subject expertise authority. This is academics or someone who has been in a profession for a long time. Another type of authority is a person in a societal position. They are in public office or have a title, like a mayor or a judge. The third type is someone who has life experience that has given her the credibility to speak on a topic. The trustworthiness of an information resource depends on where it came from, who it was made for, and how it is used. Effective researchers understand that the level of credibility and quality needed from a source will vary based on the context. Here's an example. If you're a new student at the college, you've got a lot on your plate, and your immediate need is to know how to get to your first class. You need a campus map. That's it. A simple map. It is very valuable to you at that moment when you have five minutes to get to your first class. When you find a map, you trust it because it was created by the college. It was made for students and you need it to find your way around. In this context, the map is a valuable information resource. You don't need the college's 100 page education and facilities master plan. That's overkill. However, if you were, say, an architectural student, researching the space and changes that have to be considered in constructing a new campus building, then reading the college's facilities master plan would be a very good idea. A basic map of the campus would be useless to you. Two different information sources, two different contexts. Yet both are valuable depending on the information need. Credibility indicates the degree of trust that researchers give to a source. It's important to understand that non-traditional resources, such as blog posts and tweets, may yield valuable information. While scholarly articles are what we typically think of as being credible sources, depending on your context, a tweet from a reputable organization or person may also give you trustworthy and relevant information. It's important, too, to give a healthy dose of skepticism to sources and assess where it came from, what the purpose of the work was, and the context in which the information is presented. Let's say you're researching how the United Nations is combating climate change. You come across a tweet from Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, that provides a link that will help you with your research. Let's look at how this tweet was created. Who is creating the source? It is the current leader of the United Nations, or perhaps someone on his staff. Why are they sharing the information? to communicate to followers and by extension to the world the importance of getting youth involved in fighting climate change. Going to the link in this tweet, I see that it is a press release from the UN.org and I see that it is asking youth to participate by this link here. So in this context, this tweet and accompanying press release are credible and relevant to my research regarding the UN's role in climate change. The format, the tweet, is not what's important. But the message is, understanding the context, why it was published and by whom, proves authority here. Researchers need to be skeptical, however. If the above tweet had come from, say, Antonio Banderas, the Spanish actor, you would be skeptical. Conversely, if Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the UN, tweeted about 20th century Spanish cinema, you would also hesitate. Yes, both Antonios could be passionate about each other's line of work, but ask yourself, are they the best experts on the other's respective knowledge and experience? That's it. If you have any questions on whether a source you found for your research project is authoritative, give us a call. We are here to help.